doing how y'all doing what's going on welcome back to my channel my name is sasha if you are new if you're a returning subscriber welcome back my loyal royals so good to see you if you are new to the family welcome to the family my new loyal royals so good to finally meet you please make sure you subscribe to my channel i am on the road to 300 subscribers please make sure you do subscribe leave this video a thumbs up Please make sure you share it with a friend, especially if you have people who are flying for the first time. Hopefully this video can help them out. This is actually a part one of two for this particular video. This video is going to be from my perspective as someone who works in the aviation industry. And then the second video is actually going to be from my passengers on one of my flights. They gave advice as well and that video will be from them and that video will be out on Monday and this video will post on Saturday. So again, please make sure you subscribe, leave this video a like, leave it a thumbs up, leave me comments down below if you have any advice for someone who is a first time flyer or someone who has not flown in a long time and doesn't realize that the rules have changed for different carriers and not all carriers are the same. Leave a comment down below, let me know what you got. And last but not least, Please make sure that you do go and follow me on Twitter at DragonPink07. I am active on Twitter. Please make sure you go follow me on Twitter at DragonPink07. Again, please make sure you subscribe to my channel. I am on the road to 300 subscribers. Please subscribe, share this video with your friends, family, or whoever else you choose to, and make sure you leave me a like as well. With all that being said, let's get into this video. So, Due to what's been going on the past couple of years, the entire aviation industry has changed drastically. It is nothing like what it was prior to the pandemic, and it's still continuing to change even today. And in my personal perspective, as someone who works in the industry and has worked in the industry for almost 14 years, I promise you it's going to take at least probably another seven, yeah, probably another seven, if not 10 total that uh, the industry will fully, fully recover. Things are progressing. Airlines are getting more staffing. They're able to make things run a lot more smoothly, whereas there are some cases where uh, staffing is still on a shortage and even aircraft. A lot of carriers, our aircraft are still sitting in the desert. And I say in the desert because there are a lot of what we call airplane graveyards and that's where the airplanes go and sit when they're not being used in service. They're cared for because they preserve themselves by being out in the heat. But either way, that's that on the airplanes. So, but this video is going to be my tips when it comes to aviation and flying, especially in reference to flying as of nowadays, I mean, you know, post pandemic. So I have my notebook here in front of me. So as I'm looking down, I'm literally just looking down and I'm reading off the tips and then I'll explain them. So please watch this video all the way to the end because I want to make sure that the advice goes through and just even if you let it play in the background, just please try your best to pay attention to it because hopefully this will help someone out in the end. So tip number one, arrive up to three hours before your departure time. There are so many people that come to the airport locally. They come from a hotel or they come from home and they show up 30 minutes prior to the departure time and they expect the plane to hold and wait for them. No, it's not going to wait for you. Get to the airport early because that gives you time to get through TSA, get to the gate, see if there are any changes and then let you go ahead and relax before your flight boards. All air carriers are going to tell you that for domestic travel, it's recommended to get to your airport three hours ahead of time. If you are an international traveler, most airlines will recommend four to five hours ahead of time to give you time to get to the airport, get yourself settled, get checked in with the airline, get through, I believe, customs, because depending on the airport, customs can take a lot longer depending on what you have to go through. But please 
arrive up to at least three hours before your departure time. I will tell you for a fact, BWI is lit when it comes to air travel because it's busiest for us in the morning with the first couple of flights that leave between six and eight. Then it's busiest again between that midday time, between noon and 2 p.m. Then it's busiest again going into the um, later hours of the night. So just as much as you can get to the airport up to three hours early. If you are flying in from somewhere else, your airplane is going to arrive regardless of whatever time that you are booked for. So if you don't have a flight until the nighttime and your plane arrives into your connection airport at like seven o'clock in the morning and your PM shift, your PM shift, oh my gosh, your PM flight is not until say like seven or eight o'clock at night. If you choose to leave the airport, you need to make sure you come back at a decent time to save yourself the trouble of getting through traffic as well as getting back through security and getting to your gate so you do not miss your flight. Please arrive at least three hours before your time. I could say more on that, but there's a whole lot with that, but that's just going to be that particular tip. Next, expect the unexpected. This can be a broadened topic because anything can happen when you are flying or when you go to an airport, literally anything, any and everything from when we have weather issues, there's a ton of gate changes. You may have it where the crew may arrive late, planes leave late, things happen. Expect the unexpected. The more you expect the unexpected to occur, the less stressful your experience will be. And I say that because, as I mentioned, anything can happen. And if you come with an open mind, which is actually the next tip, if you are open minded and you expect the unexpected versus expecting everything to go in order of A, B, C, D, E, F, G, you are going to be much more relaxed when it comes to things going on. And I promise you, you will be a lot more mellow, more accepting of the situation, unless it's something that you really, really, really are just like, okay, this is just stressing me out because I've already had a stressful day and this is not helping me at all, then okay. But in the end of it, it's just expect the unexpected because anything can occur. Literally anything can occur. And as far as the keep an open mind, it's exactly as the phrase says, be open-minded because you can't go there and say, I'm going to get to the airport. I'm going to go through TSA. I'm going to sit at my gate and I'm going to leave on time. That would be perfect in a perfect world. But being open-minded means, well, what if something happens? What if something goes wrong? And that falls back into the expect the unexpected category. Next thing, double check with your carrier for updated rules and regulations. This is a big one because as the airlines are recovering from the pandemic, um, more and more rules and regulations are changing. I know one of the biggest changes that a lot of the carriers made I believe it was either last year or the year before last, but all the airlines cut the emotional animal acceptance. We no longer take emotional support animals. This is due to someone's quote, emotional support animal. Um, they're near uh, hurting. Well, we're going to say hurting another passenger on another carrier, on another carrier. And it made national headlines. And there were a good amount of complaints to the Department of Transportation because of such people bringing their animals because they did not want to pay the pet fees that the airlines charge. And I know it gets expensive, but if you want to fly with Fluff McFluff, you're going to have to pay the price for Fluff McFluff. But as far as the emotional animals go, yes, there are people who genuinely do need the emotional animals to fly. I do understand that. I do have a friend. She has a dog that is her emotional animal because if not, if she doesn't fly with him then or have him with her, she gets a really bad case of anxiety. So I totally understand. So don't nobody come at me and say, well, I have an emotional animal and it's my legitimate animal. I get that. Again, my friend has one and I totally understand that. But that goes to say for everybody else that was faking it and it caused problems. So it ruined it for everybody. So be sure to check the updated rules and regulations because the rules again are constantly changing the way that carriers do things are changing. So just be, be sure and do your research, basically. Do your research before you fly, because each carrier is different. I've had it where people tell me, well, this is how we board on this carrier, or this is how we board on this airline. Okay, 
that don't make a difference to me. The airline I work for is the rules of the airline I, work, I follow, and that's that. But just double check and do your research. Next, respect the boarding integrity. Each airline boards differently, but you must respect their boarding integrity. For us with my carrier that I work for, we board by groups and we board in alphanumerical order. One of the differences that I always, well not differences, but one of the things I always see is people will be, one person is in the end of one group and then their partner or friend they're traveling with is in the beginning of the next group. And they'll walk right up to us and say, such and such is traveling with me, it's okay if they board with me. No, no it's not. That is called self upgrading. If you wish to upgrade, customer service will gladly upgrade you for a price. That is not what you're gonna do. You're not gonna drag that person and say, this person's with me, they're going with me. No, they are not. You're not doing that. We must respect boarding integrity and that's what we intend to do. If you do not like that rule, then you do not need to board an airplane. That falls into the next tip. Take responsibility for your own actions. Basically, that actually kind of falls back into tip number one with arriving on time to your flight. Don't blame us if you wake up late and you get to the airport late and you don't pay attention to the fact that your flight leaves at eight o'clock and you get to the airport at 7.50 and expect, expect that plane to wait for you. Don't do that. Or you sit there in that boarding area while everybody around you is getting up to board the aircraft and you hear people calling the flight out, calling your particular flight out, even down to calling your name individually to make sure that you don't miss your flight. And you still sit there and you miss your flight because you chose not to pay attention or you weren't paying attention. That's on you at that point because you are responsible for being sure that you make your own flight. It is not on us to hold your hand or any other carrier to hold your hand to be sure that you make your flight. Yes, we will do our best to really make sure that you make your flight, that you don't miss it, but we're not gonna come and hold your hand and drag you to the airplane and say, you must make your flight if you don't pay attention to anything around you. Pay attention to your surroundings, be responsible for your own actions, especially when it comes to making your flight. That falls under be vigilant, which is the next tip. Be vigilant. There is always something going on at the airport. You know the phrase, if you see something, say something? That's a part of being vigilant. Be vigilant to your surroundings because there are so many people I see in the airport every day and they literally just act like there's nothing going on or they purposely block out everything around them. That's how you miss your flight. That's how you miss gate changes. That's how you miss important announcements, even if it refers to your flight, especially if your flight is delayed. Be vigilant. Ooh, this next one is a good one. Technology is your worst enemy. I say this because I have dealt with numerous delayed flights. And when it comes to delayed flights, one thing that happens frequently, I tell people, be prepared to be spammed by the airline for flight update times. And as a result, that's literally gonna be your worst enemy because what people tend to do is they take that seriously and then they say, oh, my flight's delayed until 10, even though it was supposed to leave at seven, so now I'm not gonna be back at the gate till close to 10 o'clock when it's supposed to depart. Do not do that. Because if something occurs and somehow we manage to get that flight back on time and it leaves at seven o'clock and you are not on that flight and you miss it, the first thing you're gonna do is say, but my phone says this, my phone said that. No, it should be on you to go and talk to an actual living, living person to find out the flight update. Any carrier will tell you this, that you're gonna get different updates because they're generic text messages that are sent out when flights are delayed. They're generic. They're not even sent out by real people. They're generically sent out by an automated system. Any carrier will tell you, if you have questions about your delayed flight, you must go and ask a person because if you rely on the email or text message that you get from your phone, it's gonna hurt you in the end because the system for the airlines do not coincide nine times out of 10 with the app or whatever email that you use that they contact you with. They don't coincide. And then as a result, if you miss your flight, then it's our fault because 
you didn't go and ask the real person, hey, are we still on for 10 o'clock or is it going to go earlier or whatever? The only question I know for a fact we get constantly besides what may happen with the flight is if it'll cancel. If it's one of those earlier in the day ones and it just keeps getting delayed, 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 you have a better shot of that flight just getting changed to a different airplane and a different crew being put on it and it going at a decent time, if not back on time, versus late at night when everything is just going haywire, whether it be weather somewhere, whether there's maintenance or any kind of other issue going on. But please, when it comes to delayed flights, technology is your worst enemy. Or especially, I get this one a lot too, but here on my phone in the app, it says gate, I don't know, B12, but the flight is out of B10. Okay, the app again does not coincide with the quick gate changes of the system in the airport. They don't coincide. So do not get mad if you walk up to someone and say, but the app says such and such. Just go to that person and ask them, hey, what gate is such and such gonna be at? They'll tell you, go to your gate and keep it moving. It's as simple as that. And for the people that say, well, why did they change the gate? Why did they change the gate? Gate changes happen for a reason. Either a city, a station is short on gates or the gate that they were holding the airplane out on, they gotta get that plane in the gate, get it done and get it gone. Please don't question why, this, why so many gate changes, why this and why that. If you really just need to know, just know that we made the gate change, it happened, go to the next gate and be ready to go. That's that. That falls under the next tip of when unsure, ask before assuming the worst. If you are legitimately confused about something, just walk up to somebody and ask. They may not give you the answer that you wanna hear, but they're going to give you an answer. If you don't trust their answer, you can go on to the next person. Find somebody who will give you a more detailed answer. But the biggest thing is don't assume the worst and assume that you know what's going on based on what you see. Yes, what you see may be true. What you see may not be true. That's why it's important to ask questions. Ask questions versus making an assumption. <sighs> and last but not least, just show kindness and respect. Say thank you. Show people that you have actual legitimate respect because the biggest thing I, I notice is everybody is okay until something affects them. Yes, it can be an inconvenience, but you know what though? You're not the only one that's inconvenienced when stuff happens. You don't know the background that goes on with us personally, what we have to deal with. All you see is the outer part and you just know, okay, it's a gate change. I gotta go from point A to point B. Oh, I gotta go from like the A pier to the C pier. Have you not been to bigger airports that don't have trams? Not all huge airports have a tram that's gonna take you from point A to point B. Sometimes if the tram is there, what if it breaks down? You really gotta book it from one side of the airport to the other. Just be respectful, show kindness, say thank you. Say, I'm glad you're here. I'm happy to see you. Thank you for doing your job. Because so much has happened since the beginning of 2020 to today, with it going into the, towards the end of 2022. But just be, show gratefulness. Just show respect. And even if someone disrespects you, just brush it off, keep it moving. Because yes, they're having a stressful day, you're having a stressful day. But two wrongs ain't gonna make a right. Just keep it moving. Just show respect to other people. And that's pretty much it. So that is gonna be it for this portion of the video. Hopefully the tips weren't too over the place. Hopefully you find them helpful. This is my perspective of tips as told by that of myself as I do work with an airline in the aviation industry and I have been with such for close to 14 years now. Part two of this video is actually gonna be from the perspective of my passengers from my Nashville flight from last week. They gave tips that will be uh, put out into a video on Monday. Please make sure you watch that video all the way through. They were very helpful in the tips they gave. Some of them kind of tag on to the tips that I gave in this video. 
others are just all on their own. But please make sure you do subscribe to my channel, leave me a like on this video, leave me a comment down below. If you have someone that's flying for the first time or has not flown in a while, what advice would you give them? Would you give them some of the advice that I gave in this video? Or would you give them a whole different piece of advice? Post a comment down below, let me know. Go follow me on Twitter at DragonPink07. That is it. I will see you all in the next video of part two, aviation advice. Have a good night, y'all.